warfare to improve the repairs of the uh, poor Clara, uh, Maclea nuns. Uh, further repairs were made in, uh, that is 1868 by Princess Maria Colitad of Savoy. The shroud remained the property of the House of Savo until 1983, where it was uh, bequeathed. Hey, Paris, do you talk to me? Okay, I'm not an English man. Oh. Also in English, so uh, to the Holy See, uh, according to the terms of the will of former King Anbato II of Italy, the shroud was first photographed uh, photographed in 1898. I think we talked about that. Not that the first time it was photographed by that guy uh, during a public exhibition. A fire possibly caused by arson threatened the shroud on uh, that is 11th April 1997, and in 202 the Holy. Uh, the Holy See had the shroud restored like its original shape. The cloth backing and the 30 patches were removed, making it possible to photograph and scan the reverse side of the cloth, which had been hidden from the view. A faint part image of the body was found on the back of the shroud in 204. So it's the research that has been going on since 14th century to whatever, uh, 13th century, 14th uh, century to now and people are still doing more studies on that piece of cloth called the Chiroud uh, that is placed in a city in a church in Turin that is a small town in Italy. The Chiroud was placed back in public display that is in 18th, uh, the 18th time in the history in Turin from April that is to April 10th April to 23rd May 2010 and according to church officials more than 2 million visitors came to see it why, why am I not among the two million visitors who went to see it? And, uh, okay, how could I have known that? And could I have afforded from, to go there? Uh, maybe I can plan and go there. Next time I hear that it's on public display, I'll get myself there. I go get an air ticket. I'm going to tell him. I will get some information on this and I'll take some photos with this and I'll tell you. But today I have photos of them that I've, you know, I've done research on and they're here. And those photos will be with you as you watch this video. So please, don't run away. Stay tuned. On Holy Saturday, that is 30th March 2013, images of the shroud were streamed on various websites as well as on television for the first time in 40, 40 years. Roberto Gotardo, Gotardo, Gotardo of the Diocese of Turin, our Turin, stated that the first time they had released high-definition images of the shroud that can be used on tablet computers and can be magnified to show details not visible to the naked eyes as this rare exposition took place. Pope Francis issued a careful word statement which urged the faithful to contemplate the shroud with awe, but like most of his predecessors, he stopped firmly short of asserting its authenticity. The shroud was again placed on display in the cathedral in Turin from 19th April, April, that is in 2015, until 24th June 2015. So their specific times comes out, the people can look at it, then they put it back again. And the purpose is to just make sure that it's uh, uh, stored to maintain its original shape and original details as it was in the beginning. There was no charge to view it, but appointments were required. Okay, no paying, no paying fees, but you get to get an appointment for you too. Again, not getting an appointment doesn't mean each and every person can get their eyes on that. And uh, two million people, when will your appointment come? Okay, maybe fifty people, fifty thousand people at time a day, or okay, ten thousand people a day, depending to the number of the people that are given. So next time it comes out, make sure you get that self. There, you get yourself there to get see on the same. So let's talk about the religious views about these things of what the religion say. The Gospel of Matthew we had read, uh, uh, we had read on this Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, uh, Luke uh, that uh, Joseph or Matthew wrapped the body of Jesus in a piece of linen cloth and placed it in a new tomb. The Gospel of John says he used strips of linen. So the religious views on that, okay, they're all confirming that, that it really happened. The show that was used or a piece of cloth that was used, that is like, uh, referred to um, some other versions as a shroud. 
uh, Lynn and Shroud. After the resurrection, the Gospel of John states that Simon Peter came along. We had read this, but we just continue doing it again for you to get the understanding. Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of the linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Yo, the Gospel of Luke states, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. Okay, those strips of linen were lying by themselves. Yeah, they were doing so. So there was nobody, but the piece of those linen were there. Okay, it's just something you uh, you had a night dress and you were sleeping. Okay, and you woke up, you just sleep in night dress there, and then your body's not there. Okay, think about this. People were buried, you know. People were buried. And then the body destroyed and uh, soils away. The body destroys, uh, destroyed and the soils away, decays and this soils away. And when the ones remaining, okay, I don't know if the clothes, if, are people buried with clothes by them nowadays? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I don't like seeing people buried. Okay, yeah, I don't like that. So I don't really know whether they go with clothes as naked as they came in this world. So they're going back to heaven as naked as they came. And who's going to heaven? Okay, okay. I'm not here to decide whoever goes to heaven or not. But I know the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. So if you've not made that, buy your own ticket by accepting, believing in his crucifixion, death, his life on earth, crucifixion, death, and resurrection. And that is what we're talking about, the Shroud of Turin, nothing else. In 1543, John Calvin, in his book, Treatise on Relics, explained the reason why the shroud cannot be genuine. Okay. <laughs> in all the places where they pretend to have the, you know, grave clothes, uh, they show a large piece of linen by which the whole body, including the head, was covered. And according to the figure exhibited in that of, uh, of an entire body, but the evan evangelist John relates that Christ was buried as in the manner of the Jew to bury. Uh, what manner was maybe learned not only from, uh, uh, from the Jews by whom is still observed even up to now, but also from their books which explain what the ancient practices were. Ah, so it was this. The body was wrapped by uh, up by itself as far as the shoulders and then the head by itself was found, was bound round with a napkin. Okay tied by the four corners into a knot. And this is expressed by the evangelist when he says that Peter saw the linen cloth in which the body is exp uh, expressed by a vow. Oh, Peter saw the body um, in which he had wrapped laying in one place. And the napkin which had been wrapped around the head uh, lying in another place. The term napkin may mean Either the handkerchief employed by to wipe their face, or it may mean a shawl, but never means a large piece of linen in which uh, the body, uh, the whole body, was to be wrapped in. Okay, this is just linguistics, uh, linguistical issues, but we all agree when we go down and down, go we'll agree on one thing that truly this guy was buried in that shroud. Yeah, this guy, Jesus, was buried in that shroud. And what is in terrain is maybe one of those things. So you got to communicate in the comment box. You got to tell us what you think about that. So I have, however, used uh, the term in the sense uh, which uh, uh, improperly gave to it on the whole. Either uh, the evangelist John must have given a false account or every one of them must be convicted of falsehood, thus making it manifest that they have to in impudently imposed on the unland. That is according to John Calvin. Uh, according to John Calvin. Although pieces <laughs> said to be of burial clothes of Jesus are held by at least four churches in France and three in Italy, none has gathered as much religious following as the shroud in Turin. So I say to the others also in different places in France and Italy. But this one in Turin looks to be more original and authentic. And the others. The religious beliefs and practices associated with the shroud are predates historical and scientific discussions and have continued even into the 21st century that we're in, and they will continue even to do uh, to the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th centuries. 
Yeah, until the coming of Jesus, maybe when he comes back, he let us know. Okay, guys, that's a piece of cloth that I was, uh, I was wrapped in when I was buried. And it's true, there it is. So the image in that picture, there is me. Okay, will he say that? There's no prophecy that, that says that he will, he will say that. Hmm. So leave it. Drop it. Might not be important. What's important is, do you believe in the crucifixion? Oh, this, if you believe in the crucifixion, maybe this is more evidence to show that he was crucified. Sure. Indeed, the Shroud of Turin is uh, respected by, you know, Christians of several traditions. Had you ever known that it exists? Had you ever known that it exists? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe yes, and maybe not. But I'm glad to make you know that it exists. So if you go into Tarin, if you're visiting Italy, make sure you visit Tarin and ask those people in Tarin about the shroud. And when you come back, give me a call and tell me, hey, bro, I asked them and they said, that thing does exist. If I make my journey, a voyage to, you know, to Italy, I'll get to Tarin and ask those guys in Tarin, does this thing really exist? At least 10 people or 100 people. If they say, yes, it does exist, we have seen it with our bare eyes, not with glasses on, but bare eyes, then I will agree with you that it does exist. But for now, we're getting whatever. Yes, this thing is of everywhere. You got such it and you get it. My, so don't just think. So uh, it's respected by Christians of several traditions, including uh, Baptist, Catholic, Sotherians, Methodist, and Orthodox, Pentecostals, and Presbyterians. Several Lutheran parishes, parishes have hosted relic, replicas of the Shroud of Turin for didactic and devotional purposes. And that's why I told you in the beginning, there are other people who had this thing and they never wanted to get to the public because they were using it for their own religious rituals and purposes. Oh, rituals? Did you just say rituals? Okay, I don't know if they're rituals. Okay, let me say, they were using it for their religious purposes. You know, maybe they eat it up, maybe people want to eat and call unto the blood of Jesus that they can relate with because they are seeing that thing that he was wrapped in and all that, and they keep it, and they keep it safe away from intruders so that intruders won't really understand whatever these guys are doing. Maybe if I could, have, I could have got myself in that area, I would have asked them, hey guys, what are you guys doing? Don't you think that thing is so sinful, you know? You're trying to raise another image in the name of God, and you guys are sinners. You should rethink about you and repent. Bound that piece of cloth and try to find something else to do, and the people will be like, well, man, you don't know what you're talking about. That's why we hate the black guys. Okay. Cloth come with the black Jesus? <laughs> Does it really exist? <laughs> Well, it's black or brown, none of my business, guys. Oh, whatever I did is what I believe in. So mm -hmm. I'll leave to my hands not to argue about anything because it doesn't really make my faith go strong on this Okay, number three. The image uh, is of a crucified man. So that is uh, uh, number three to try to justify, you know. Uh, the print imprinted, the imprint visible on the linen is that of a real corpse in Riga Motis. Okay. Talking French? Is that Spanish? Yes. So, what do you want to do? In fact, the image is of a crucified victim. This was the conclusion of multiple criminal pathologists during one of the most pivotal periods of dissecting and testing the Shroud in 1970. So, these people are not Christians, so, but they're confirming that uh -uh, all these marks are of a crucified man, not woman. Um, yes, these marks. And this image is of a crucified man, not a woman. So no woman was crucified. Jesus did not, he did not disappear. He was crucified. I know there are people who believe there are other religions that believe ah, that this guy was not crucified. Don't tell about us about the crucifixion story. Don't you know this guy just disappeared? And he'll come back again the way he disappeared. No, this guy was crucified. Yeah, I don't care what you believe. Yeah, he was crucified. That's what I said. So, what you believe is my business to tell you that it's not right. What I believe is right. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about the blood, uh, whether the blood is real or not. Oh, one of the pathologists, you know, that's Dr. Vignon. Uh, Vignon, Dr. Vignon. Uh, let me pronounce it in Spanish way, Dr. Vignon. I know English people say Vignon or Vinon, but it's Vignon. Say that the anatomical realism of the image was so precise that a separation of serum and cellular mass was evident in many of the blood stains. 
this is the important characteristic of dried blood, which means there's real, actual dried human blood embedded in that cloth. And the guy who did this was not a Christian. So if he was a Christian, people would have said, no, he was trying to justify his faith, but this guy is not a Christian. He was not a Christian. But he said, uh-uh, guys, come here. Get it right. This is real human blood. And these are the characteristics. We can separate serum from, okay, what is serum? Okay, I know you don't. Uh, serum is the, you know, is it the colorless or whatever? There's the color that is, it's not the, it's not the red pigment of the blood. So if you do blood testing and all that, if there is uh, the separation of serum and the red pigment, so that color that is not red, the, uh, is the serum. Okay, I learned this from my father uh, sometime back. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, so uh, number five, the man was uh, mutilated like the Bible says. So uh, the man in the imprinted image on that shroud uh, was mutilated just like the Bible describes. So uh, those um, those same pathologists detected swellings around the eyes, the natural uh, reaction of uh, bracing from a beating. The New Testament claims uh, claims Jesus was severely beaten before his crucifixion. Uh, rigor mortis is also evident, evidence uh, evident with the enlarged chest and uh, distended the feet are uh, classic marks of the actual crucifixion, which means the man in that burial linen was mutilated in exactly the same manner that the New Testament says Jesus of Nazareth was beaten, whipped, and executed by means of crucifixion. So, uh, you want to do your own test and try to find it right? Maybe. Okay, get yourself there to Turin and ask those guys. Okay, bring me that thing that you call the Shroud of Turin. I want to go do my own test and try to verify if the information that you guys are giving us is false or true because I hate Jesus and I don't want to believe in him and I can't buy in either of your story about him. So, okay, he say that. I saw the guys who say that he was not crucified. I believe he was crucified. So, what else? Number six, the image is a negative one. Now, one of the more fascinating aspects of the shroud is that it is a negative image, not a positive one. The technology was not even understood until the 19th century with the invention of the camera when photographers became a photography became a modern reality which blows holes in of Reported theory that the shroud is merely a medieval forgery that was tamed or painted. Oh, it will be thousands of years until such ideas as negative image were understood, which no medieval artist could have painted as such a image. I told you to talk about this. I will talk about it. talked about the details in this thing and it's coming out in a very 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 so the positive image reveals uh reveals uh the positive image reveals uh uh historic details the positive image taken from the negative one uh, uh left and uh, what left on the shroud shows in details many of the historic markers that connect to the gospel accounts of jesus death you have the scourging marks of the roman flagrum on the arms of Jesus, legs and the back. Huh? Did you say the back? Yes, the back. Lacerations around the head. Lacerations around the head because of the uh, uh, from the crowns of the th uh, crown of thorns. Uh, his shoulders bears uh, to be uh, dislocated, uh, probably because of the carrying of the cross, and it was heavier. Uh, carrying of the cross beam and falling. According to scientists uh, who examined the shroud, all of these wounds were inflicted while he was alive, not dead. And then, uh, uh, of course, there's a stab a wound in the chest and uh, the nails marks in the wrist and the feet, all consistent with the eyewitness accounts that are recorded in the gospel. So we cannot do away with that. It's real. So that one justifies the, direct, uh, the gospels again. And these guys talked about this, and all the scientists have done their researches. They have done all those tests, and they are proving that all these things are found in the shroud. Then it happened. Hey, nothing like that on the planet. The image of the man with all his facial features and hair and wounds is absolutely unique. Nothing like it in all the world. Totally 
inexplicable. And given there are no stains indicating the composition of the linen itself, we know that whatever body was in the shroud left before the composition uh, process began, just because, uh, just as the gospel writers, writers testify about the resurrection of Jesus on the third day. So if that, if the body that was in that shroud could have decomposed, then there could have, there could have been an evidence of decomposition. But because there was none, then that body left that thing before it started decomposing. So that should be on the third day. It's really fascinating. It's really fascinating. So let's reflect on the historical burial customs. The man was interred, interred according to the Jewish burial customs at the time. Uh, being laid in a say like linen shroud is the manner in the manner they required. Yet he did not receive the ritual washing, as the New Testament indicates Jesus didn't, because the Passover and the Sabbath requirements of burying the dead. The feast of uh, the faces of Jesus. Then there isn't the cloth itself, uh, which is entirely unique. Nowhere has any other cloth been found to handle the depicted an image of a dead man in its surface. Again, the history of archaeology and the study of historical artifacts. Nowhere have we come across a burial linen with a body in prints. That is the only one. You know, yeah, that's the only one. And if you look unto the guys that Jesus was crucified with, they had no marks like Jesus. Like the crucifixion of Jesus was different. So we cannot say that mm, this is one of those guys, you know, there's one of those guys that were crucified uh, 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 besides Jesus. So this not, cannot be Jesus. No, we cannot say that. Their crucifixion was different. The details of their crucifixion was different from the details of Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, some would say the linen is old. The imprinted cloth is old. Uh, the linen itself has existed for over 600 years. A so-called uh, shroud of Turin and nearly... Okay, in Turin, in Turin, it has been there for over 600 years and nearly 2,000 years as the image of Edessa, named after a small town, Edessa, a small town in the ancient Antioch, in the modern Syria. While carbon dating in 80s, which had some ish ish, placed the shroud age in the Middle Ages, that is around, you know, uh, AD uh, 1300. New evidence has uh, roundly discredited both the results and the method of that dating. Newer evidence places the date uh, comfortably after the time frame that Jesus was said to have been crucified. That is in uh, AD 33. Yeah. Okay. I know you might not understand this, but uh, if you go to the scientists who do uh, dating of artifacts, my historical artifacts will tell you uh, uh, that carbon dating is no longer their only, uh, you know, way of trying to understand the age of some uh, things that have ever lived, um, things that existed, because it has its own flaws that it cannot give accurate information that they are looking for. So now they've developed other ways that are much better that can give them uh, at least, uh, that can give them the exact time that that thing had existed you so that is it the linen uh used uh of this cloth is uh, a herringbone twill most likely manufactured and distributed throughout the mediterranean world at least two thousand years ago this is crucial because it uh discredits the notion that the shroud was medieval forgery uh, concocted by some confidence artist i'm a confident artist and all that so uh, the material that I used on that shroud, or used to make that shroud, was there in, during the Mediterranean period, uh, well, at least 2,000 years ago. So that is still putting, you know, it in the right timeline of the existence and the crucifixion of Jesus. So nothing can do with that. And all these scientists who are doing this are not Christians. I know you can say, ah, you are Christian too, and you are not No, they are not Christians. The odds are astronomical. The odds against this image being someone other than Jesus are astronomical. So 225 billion to one, according to Paul de Gaulle, a French priest and engineer, 
which means it's not unreasonable to conclude that the man in the shroud is indeed the historical person we know of as Jesus of Nazareth, around whom his life, death, and resurrections, the Christian faith is launched and built. And that is the end of it. So, what do you think about it? I give you some photos on the same to verify what I'm talking about and what I've been talking about, but it's up to you to go read deeper and get an understanding on the same. And when you come back, please remain with the comment section and try to give us some things that you think about it and we'll go dig deeper and bring you back the information that you're looking for. So, we're not here to speak about rumors. We're here to give you facts and evidence of what we're talking about. So, kindly, for us to continue doing this, do you know what you're supposed to do? Subscribe if you're not. And if you're subscribed, mm -hmm, kindly help us share. And this is the information that you can watch with your whole family together with everyone in the room so that you can learn from it. And watch it with the Bibles open so that you can verify all those things that we talked about. And you can watch it with your Google open so that you can verify some of this information as quick as possible as you continue watching. I love you all and God bless you. See you again in the next one.